We're talking about analyzing radical and rational functions, lesson number five. We're going to be talking about graphs of rational functions, but we need to review some things and make sure that you keep these in mind. So if a rational function has a denominator which can be made to be equal to zero, then the graph of the rational functions will have vertical asymptote at that point. Now that's assuming that it can't be cancelled out. It could also have a point of discontinuity if it can be cancelled out. So if we're talking about asymptotes, then n of x over d of x, we need to think about asymptotes with no factors in common. So we can find it by just using the zero values. It's going to be x equals the zero values for the denominator. For horizontal asymptotes, here we have to kind of compare the degree. So if the degree of n of x numerator is less, then y equals zero is the horizontal. If it's equal, if the degrees are equal, and we're taking a look at the co leading coefficients. Or in other words, we can plug in x equal in infinity and see what can happen there. But it's the leading coefficient of the top over the leading coefficient of the bottom. If the degree of n of x is greater than the degree of d of x, then there's not going to be a horizontal asymptote. If we're talking about points of discontinuity, then it's n of x over d of x where they have a factor in common. It can be cancelled out, but with a domain restriction. Now, if you draw the graph, the point of discontinuity is going to have this open circle. There is no value there, but it looks like that there's just a hole there. The coordinates of the point of discontinuity can be determined algebraically by factoring the top and the bottom, simplifying the rational expression by canceling out the common factors, and then substituting the non-permissible value of x into that simplified or modified form to see what that whole value would have been. Just because you have a rational function doesn't mean that you're actually going to have discontinuities. There are some rational fu functions that you may encounter that don't, don't have discontinuities. Let's consider this example. We have the function f of x equals 1 over x squared plus 1. Then let's see. Are there any non-permissible values? Well, if we take a look here, we want to see if x squared plus 1 is ever going to equal 0. Well, if we take a look at this, it might not be obvious there, but if we continue and say x squared is equal to negative 1, then we think now we have a squared value that equals negative 1. Well, there is no value that when you square it, you're going to equal negative 1 in the real number system. So there aren't any non-permissible values here. Well, what is the domain of the function? Well, it means then x can be any real number at all. There are no restrictions for x. The maximum of the function will occur when the denominator has its lowest value. So let's determine when it's going to be the lowest. So if we take a look at the denominator, which is x squared plus 1, where will it be the lowest? How can we get it to be the lowest? Well, that's when f x squared plus 1, here's a positive number, and here's a positive number. So if we can make x squared the lowest possible number, lowest positive number. Well, what is the lowest positive number? Well, we could have zero actually, right? A non-negative. So here, if x squared equals zero, that would work out. That means that x is equal to zero. Hmm. Okay, when x is equal to zero, then the function, which we had up here, this function, when x is equal to zero, fx is equal to 1 over 0 plus 1, that's equal to 1. So the maximum value of the function is at x equaling 0, 1. So 0, 1 is the maximum. All right. Why can the value of f of x never be negative? Well, if we take a look at f of x, it equals 1 over x squared plus 1. Since x squared is a non-negative number, always, no matter what x is, and this will always be a positive value. Then you have this one, which is always positive. So we have numerator, which is always positive. We have the denominator, which will never be negative, because x squared can't be equal to um, anything less than zero, in fact. Therefore, the denominator is also always positive. So this, in fact, 
this function will never even equal zero. All right. Does the function have any zeros? No, it doesn't. If f of x never gets to zero, then there are no x values that will make it zero. And since it has doesn't have any x values that make it zero, then there are no zeros. Okay, let's use these answers then to suggest a possible range for the function. Well, the lowest it can be happen at ze x equals zero, and we found the maximum was equal to one. Then if we use x values that are larger and larger and larger, then that denominator gets larger and larger and larger, and therefore the whole function gets smaller and smaller and smaller, but can never be zero. So f of x is never negative, but gets closer to zero. So the range could possibly be something like this. y such that y is between 0 and 1. That's a little messy. Let's, let's try that again. So we have 0 less than y greater than 1 is greater than that. So y is between 0 and 1. It can be 1, but it's not going to be 0. Oh, I forgot here. Let's do y is any real number. And there you have it. Pretty messy, but you can read it, I think. Let's use a graphing calculator to graph that section and see what we find. Well, what we find here, this if this is 1, then at 0, 1, this is going to be the maximum. And it gets closer to 0 as x gets to negative infinity and closer to zero as x gets to positive infinity. So we can start those there. And here, if we use a graphing calculator, we can see that it looks something like this, something like that. It should be a little smoother here. You get the idea. OK, let's take a look at the graph then. Does the graph have a vertical asymptote? Nope, it doesn't. You can't see where it's broken here. In fact, I was able to draw it with one stroke of my pen. A point of discontinuity? No. Horizontal asymptote? Yes. The horizontal asymptote here is still y equals 0. The x-axis is still a horizontal asymptote here. Here we have four calculator screenshots. There are four different rational functions. We'll just look at one of them at a time. But we're going to look here and state the equation of the horizontal asymptote, if any, of each of the graph. So take a look at f of x equal 1 over x squared plus 1, which is right up here. And we notice there is no vertical asymptote. But what is the horizontal asymptote? Well, the horizontal asymptote looks like it is the x-axis here, which is the equation of y equals 0. What about x over x squared plus 1, which is over here? This is kind of this s-looking graph. Again, if you take a look here, even though it has a bit of different concavity, this seems to get closer to zero this way. This one seems to get closer to zero this way. So again, we have a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. Well, let's take a look at h. x squared over x squared plus 1. At extremities, n behavior here, this looks like that looks like it's a y value equaling 1 here. That looks like a y value equaling 1 there. So it seems like the graph tends towards that line y equals 1. So we can say horizontally that is an asymptote y equals 1. And what about this one? Here is this graph, x cubed over x squared plus 1. And right here in the end behavior, tending towards this. On the other side, the end behavior is tending towards that. So it looks like a, an oblique line here, a, a slanted line. So there is no horizontal asymptote there. Now if you take calculus later, you'll learn about perhaps different types of asymptotes, but for now we can definitely say there's no horizontal asymptote for that one. When's that? Let's talk about B. Do the equations in A agree with the rules for horizontal asymptotes in the review at the beginning of the lesson? Well, yes, they do. If you think about it, if you take a look at each one of these, 
the denominator degree here is larger than the degree of the numerator. And we said in the rules that if that's the case, then we'll have a horizontal asymptote of zero. So here's degree two, degree zero, degree two, degree one, or sorry, this is this is degree two, this is degree zero. So degree two compared to degree one, yes, the denominator has a higher degree. Here in this one, it says, okay, if we're talking about the same degree, then let's look at the leading coefficients of the top and the bottom. So it's one over one, y equals one. Hey, look at that horizontal asymptote. And again, here we have the degree three on the top, degree two on the bottom. We can definitely say there's no horizontal asymptote. Let's talk about why as x approaches infinity, the graph of g of x, x over x squared plus one approaches the asymptote y equals zero from above, but as x approaches negative infinity, the graph approaches the asymptote y equals zero from below. Okay, well let's use really large numbers for x. So what we're going to try is we're going to try substituting large positive values for x. And let's see what we get. So here, if we're talking about g of x being equal to x over x squared plus one, then really we're saying that we have a, a positive value, a really large positive value on the top. And then on the bottom, it's a positive value squared plus one, which is still positive. If we take a look at this division, positive divided by a positive, that's going to be a positive number. Okay, good. Now, if we said, what about a really large negative number, like negative infinity, a really negative number? For x. If we do that, on the top we're going to get a negative number, and on the bottom that really large negative number is still squared, so that becomes negative times negative is a positive, plus one is also positive. So you get a negative number divided by a positive number, and that is a negative number. So here you have something that was positive using just the signs of those really large numbers, large positive number, you get positive over positive, that's positive. With a really large negative number, then you get a negative number on the top over a positive, which is negative. Let's talk about d and explain why the graph of h of x is equal to x squared over x squared plus one has no points in quadrants three and four. Well here, if we took any value here for x, it's going to be squared. So we're going to end up with a positive value on the top. And when we square either a positive or a negative, we still get a positive number. So it seems then, no matter what x value we use, the result is always going to be positive on the top divided by positive on, on the bottom, which means that the y values are only going to be positive. Well, if the y values are only going to be positive, or the output values are only going to be positive, then if you think about it, then that means we're only going to be in quadrant 1 and 2. In quadrants 3 and 4, you have y coordinates that are negative, and we are not going to have any output values that are negative. So please note that whether or not the graph of rational function has horizontal asymptotes is not related to whether or not the function has discontinuities. You can have, just like you saw here, you have graphs that have horizontal asymptotes, but no discontinuities. You can also have discontinuities without having an asymptote. Let's take a look at class example one and take a look at all these functions here. We have all rational functions, it looks like. And so let's take a look at each one. And when we're ready, without sketching, we want to know which functions have no discontinuities, vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote, and all of these characteristics. So let's take a look and simplify these in so that we can use them. Now we have this one. We can see that we have x minus 4 over x plus 4. So that's okay. We're going to have an x. x is not allowed to equal negative 4 here. Well, that means that there's a restriction. 
and that can point to discontinuity. Okay, looking at some of these, we're going to have to factor them. So let's go through and factor these. This one here, we have x squared minus 4 is x plus 2 times x minus 2 over x squared plus 4. All right, and c, we have x plus 4 over, and factoring this one is going to be x plus 2, x minus 2. Again, we see x squared minus 4 again on the bottom. And so we can see that this is going to be x squared minus 4. Whoops. Let's factor that. So x plus 2, x minus 2. And here again, we see that there's a factor that we can cancel. Here we can see in E, we have x squared plus 4 over x plus 4. Let's take a look at f of x. We have x squared plus 4, which cannot be factored, but the bottom can. So this is going to equal x plus 2, x minus 2. g of x, we have a negative that we have to deal with. So this is going to be negative x plus 4 over a negative x squared plus 4. That negative and negative cancel. So it really is just x plus 4 over x squared plus 4 in h of x then we're going to have again we factor out the negative so we have negative x squared plus 4 and this is negative take out the negative we have x squared minus 4 remember that this negative times this negative 4 is going to be the plus 4 that's equal to x squared plus 4 that can't be factored but the bottom can x plus 2 x minus 2 here we have in i, the top is going to be factored into x squared x plus 2 times x minus 2 over x plus 2. And we can notice there's something that can factor here. And j, we're going to need a little bit of factoring here. Take out an x squared. It's got x minus 4 over x, x minus 2. And then another step, we have x squared. I'm just going to leave the this and fact uh, cancel that later here. We're going to have x minus 4, x minus 2. Oh, maybe I should have canceled it right away. So x squared canceling this one. Then we can see this is going to be x times x minus 4 over x minus 2. But that's as long as x does not equal 0. And we should probably do restrictions for most of these. We can notice whenever we have the denominator, we should write in here. This means x cannot equal plus or minus 2. Again, x cannot equal plus or minus 2. Here, x cannot equal negative 4. In this one, x cannot equal plus or minus 2. There is no value here that makes the bottom zero. So we don't have to worry about that one. Here, again, we should say x cannot equal plus or minus 2. In this one, x cannot equal negative 2. And here, x cannot equal 0. because We did cancel it out. But also, x cannot equal 2 either. All right, we're ready to answer these questions. So without sketching, we are going to talk about which graphs functions have no discontinuities. So to find the functions that, that have no discontinuities, we're looking for graphs which will never be zero on the bottom. We found this one here. That's never zero. And it looks like, oh, and this one here. That's never zero. So it looks like B and G. B and G. What about ones that have no vertical asymptote? Well, no vertical asymptote means that there is no restrictions. So B and G is works. So B and G for no vertical asymptotes. But what about I? If you notice here, when we took, take a look at I, we can cancel out that factor. As long as X does not equal negative 2 here, then that is a removable or a point discontinuity, I mean. So we need to include i here in b. What about functions that have no horizontal asymptote? 
that's one where the degree of the numerator is higher than the degree of the denominator. So let's see if we can find that. Right here, there's one here, and there's also one here. So E and J, and also I, right there. So E, I, and J, E, I, and J for no horizontal asymptote. And which ones have the x-axis as the horizontal asymptote? Or in other words, y equals 0 as a horizontal asymptote. What we're looking for in this case is those functions that have the degree on the bottom, which is higher than the degree on the top. So that's this one here, C and D and G. So C, D, and G. So here for the y equals 0, as well C, D, and G. Now which ones have a horizontal asymptote with equation y equals 1? That means here that the leading coefficient of the top simplify to this a or b equaling 1. Let's see if we can find that one. Here, let's use a green and we'll try and find. And that has to be equal degree. So this one here, B equal degree and F and H. So it looks like we have B, F and H. So B, F and H. Oh, and we missed one too. Uh, the this x, oh, let's do that. This one here, lean coefficient of 1 and degree 1 on both the top and bottom. So a, b, f, and h. Now, which ones have points of discontinuity? That means they, they're the ones that had the restrictions on the bottom but were able to be cancelled. So let's see if we can find those ones. Here we can see this is one of them. So i is 1 that cancelled. So this was ended up being x minus 2 when x was not equal to negative 2. And where else is there one that cancels? There's d. Here this d ends up being x or just 1 over x minus 2 when x is not equal to negative 2. So that's another one, d. And this one too, there's a removable, con removable sorry, a point discontinuity for j because one of these x's were able to cancel out. So point of discontinuity, there was d, i, and j functions. Let's take a look at class example 2 and algebraically to determine the equations of any asymptotes and the coordinates of any points of discontinuity on this graph. We have f of x is equal to 2x minus 1 times x minus 5 over top of x squared minus 2x minus 15. So let's do this in a bit of an order here. We're first going to try and find the domain and then we'll try and find the range and then we'll deal with some discontinuities and see if we can find the points of any discontinuity here. So here, when we're talking about the domain, we know that this is a rational function. We can see that this is two factor, linear factors here, and then we have a second degree on the bottom, and it's the denominator that's going to talk about the restrictions. So here, if we factor this x squared minus 2x minus 15, we will result in x minus 5 and x plus 3. And we can do a quick multiplication to make sure that that works. x squared plus 3x minus 5x and then negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. Very good. So we factor the bottom. So we know then the denominator is not allowed to equal 0. Those are the restrictions on the domain. So x minus 5 cannot equal 0. So x cannot equal 5. And x here cannot equal negative 3. Now, all we know at this point is that these are discontinuities. We don't know what kind of discontinuities they are. They could be factored out, or they could be vertical asymptotes. Now, if we look at the f of x 
again, we can see that this is, well, let's rewrite it out. So it's going to be 2x minus 1, x minus 5. We have an x plus 3, and an x minus 5. And here we can see this x minus 5 cancels as long as x is not equal to 5. So that means that that is going to be a point of discontinuity. But this x plus 3 as a factor is going to tell us then that this x equaling negative 3, this is a vertical asymptote. This x not equaling 5 will help us find a point of discontinuity. And why is it a point of discontinuity? Is because it was cancelled out here. So f of x will end up looking like 2x minus 1 over x plus 3, as long as x does not equal 5. And of course, we, we know that x cannot equal 3 either here. Or sorry, negative 3. Okay, so let's go back to our goal. Remember, we're trying to find the domain. So here we can write the domain. The domain is going to be x such that x is not equal to negative 3 or equal to 5, but x can be any real number after that. Now when we try the range, we can say, well, what is the range? The y is such that, but we don't have the restrictions on y yet. So what we'll need to do is look at the end behavior of the graph. And how we're going to do this is take a look at the degree of the f of x on the top and the degree on the bottom. Here we have a linear factor here, a linear factor here, and that's going to end up with a degree of 2. This is also a degree of 2. So by our rules then of the discontinuities, here we're going to try and see what the a over b is going to be. So leading coefficient of the top, it's going to be 2x squared when we multiply. And then on the bottom, you have an x squared. So what you can see cancels is the x squared cancels, and this ends up being 2. So in the end behavior of the graph will look like it's going to be 2 on either side. But here y does not equal 2. So y, we know for sure, is not going to equal 2. Now also, there's a dis point of discontinuity that comes from x equaling 5. So as a separate step here, to find the point of discontinuity, then we are going to substitute x equaling 5 into the modified f of x here. So this is going to be here 2 x minus 1 over this x plus 3. But we're putting in 5 right now to tell us what that point of discontinuity is. So this is 2 times 5, that's going to be 9, 10 minus 1 is 9, and 5 plus 3 is 8. So this is the y value of that point. It doesn't exist, there's a hole in that graph, but that's where it would be. Remember, it would, it would look something like this, right? This right here is a 9 over 8, and it happens at 5. Well then, now we can go to our range then, we can say, y is not going to be equal to 9 over 8 because that point is missing. But then y can be any other real number here. All right, so we found the domain and range of f. We found the points of discontinuity. The point of discontinuity here is, happens at 5, 9 over 8. There's a hole in that graph. And there's a vertical asymptote at x equaling negative 3. Okay, you're ready for your assignment, and I'll see you in class.